Welcome to Mac and PC Prime video. This time, the Mac is running Windows 98 today. Seems like a strange thing to do. First of all, it can't run natively on a modern 64-bit CPU, and definitely not on an M1-based associate. Secondly, it's seriously outdated, and it's kind of considered useless for today's productivity. Thinking about it further, you will see that it opens a whole new old world. This video will cover a step-by-step -step process to get a working Windows 98 installation, including proper graphics sound and an easy way to exchange files between Mac OS and Windows. So make sure to subscribe and enable notifications if you don't want to miss that. We first need to install UTM on your Mac if you haven't done so yet. Download the UTM DMG from the website. Once downloaded, simply open the DMG file and drag the UTM tool up to your Applications folder using Finder. Then, to start UTM, launch it as any other application on your Mac. Make sure to configure the VM in the exact same way. Then UTM click on Create a new virtual machine. In the first step, Virtualize. I chose it. Select Operating System Windows. Choose Browse in here. Navigate to the location where you downloaded the Windows 98 as the ISO selected and click Open. Select Hardware Fist Memory. Lower the RAM to anything under 512 MB. As you can see, I chose 64, which should be plenty for most things. Then type storage 10 gigabytes. Next one, summary name type Windows 98 and select and click the open VM settings dot and save. Then click System Hardware, IEI 386X86 Architecture as System. Choose for the standard PC with i440FX with Pentium 2 from 1996, alias of PC 7.2 PC. Uncheck your UEFI boot and RNG device and click Select. Force PS2 controller. Input USB support disabled. Display to change the emulated display card, Cirrus CLGD to series called. The networking tab can stay as is. And finally in the sound up changed emulated audio car to create a sound blaster of 16, then click save. All right, all preparation is done and we can now finally launch the VM and get Windows 98 CE installed. Just click the Launch Play button after selecting the VM in the left column in order to do so. As soon as the VM boots, it will boot from the mounted ISO as there is nothing on the hard disk. And you should see the following menu pop up here. Go for the second option, Boot From. CD-ROM using the arrow keys and press enter. This menu is just there to prevent people from running into issues with booting their PC when they would leave the Windows 98 CD in the drive. In the next menu, choose the first option to start Windows 98, set up from CD-ROM. This will load some drivers like the one for the CD drive and will load the tool that checks if there is a partition created to install Windows onto. This is not the case, as this is the first time we do this. Just press Enter to start, and in the next screen, choose to use all unallocated space for Windows. Now choose Yes to enable large disk support, as what we have here is considered a large disk in the VM. After doing this, the system must reboot, and we need to repeat the first steps here again in order to continue to set up to choose boot from CD-ROM and then start Windows 98 setup from CD-ROM as well, exactly as we did before. This time to set up program, we'll format the hard drive, or at least the disk image, which we assigned to the VM. This takes some time. Once the format process is done, there will still be a quick disk integrity check with Microsoft SanDisk. I really forgot that this tool existed, although I spent hours of my time looking at it in the past. If all goes well, 
you will end up at the graphical interface of the Windows 98 setup. In case you have issues with the mouse pointer, click the most pointer icon in the top bar of the UTM VM. This will allow you to better control the mouse and the VM. You can press Ctrl and Alt to release the mouse back to Mac OS if you need to. Click on Continue in the welcome screen. And choose the default installation location as destination. The installer checks if there is enough space and if there is something else on the disk. Eventually, we can choose what to install. As you can see, I went for a typical install and selected as good as everything I could. Now, we need to give the VM a name. Again, not very important for the way we'll be using the VM. And here we can click Next to start copying the files and do the actual installation. This will copy the required files to the virtual hard disk and will again take some time. When all required files are copied, the VM will restart after the reboot. You should be presented with the first boot screen of your fresh Windows 98 as the installation. This brings back some memories for sure. Once the VM is fully booted, the setup process will continue and you can enter your name organization and eventually the product key. The next stage of the installation tries to install the drivers for the virtual hardware in the system. During this process, one or more reboots are required. I notice that in some cases the VM gets stuck while restarting. If you run into this, release your mouse pointer with Ctrl and Alt and then just turn off the VM and start again using the buttons on top of the VM window in your team, UTM. It can be pretty annoying, but unfortunately that's how it is. Eventually we end up with the last stage. This again can take quite some time in the And of course, after another reboot, you will end up with a nice and clean retro Windows 98 desktop. Pure nostalgia to see this if you ask me, especially on a modern Mac. This is the end of the installation step and you now have a working Windows 98 easy installation on your Mac. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please put a thumbs up. It was nice to have you here and I hope to see you back here soon.